What is up guys? Welcome back to part four of the Salvage Corvette driveway rebuild. Um, I've been itching to work on the car in the last couple of days, but I couldn't because I've really had no parts still waiting on them. But finally, uh, I think we just got our radiator support. Um, so let's get this unpackaged and dive in right away and start replacing the radiator support. Yep, here's our new radiator support. Um, it says C6 Crane Corvettes made in USA. Uh, definitely looks a little bit more stronger than the original one uh, But either way we needed a new one. This one looks pretty good. So uh, let's jump in and install this one So the first step was to uh, just unscrew these little, um, I use a 13 millimeter wrench uh, and drop this side of it. Um, next step is probably want to support uh, the radiator with something so it doesn't completely fall off once we take off that side. Um, so yeah, let's support the radiator and take off the other side. Got a little bit of an issue here um, because of how this got bent um, that screw right there it's really hard to access with anything I tried a bunch of different wrenches tried one of these and I uh, really just can't get to it so what I think I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna try to bend this radiator support back out until I get access there hopefully you won't have this issue but as you can see mine is pretty badly damaged so I'm gonna have to do that also it started raining so that's always fun but it's not too bad so we'll just continue Okay, so we definitely hit a roadblock. Uh, there's really no, not a single tool that I could use to access that nut right there. So this might be kind of stupid, but I think this needs to be tugged back a little bit. The way I'm gonna do that is uh, hook it up to that strap right there and gonna kind of tug it away um, in this direction. Uh, worked before on the Mustang, so um, I'll give it a try here. I won't go too crazy. I don't wanna break anything. Uh, worst case scenario, I'm gonna get a um, Sawzall or something and just chop that off and then hammer it back. Well, you know what they say, it's not stupid if it works. Um, this actually completely tore off the welds on the radiator support, but everything else is fine. Um, the radiator is actually supported up top, so really we just kind of finished breaking these welds that were already going bad. Um, so now we have the whole thing off, all we gotta do is just disconnect the wiring and uh, kind of thread the wires out of here, and we're good to go. Start installing a new one. By the way, as I was uh, setting up the camera, someone was driving by and honking and waving. I'm guessing you watched the video, so what's up to you, man? Stop by sometime. Here's a comparison of the old one uh, with a new one. Uh, some of the key differences is uh, this part right here, as you can see, it's just like a skinny piece. And here, it's like a solid block of aluminum, so a lot stronger. Um, and overall, it just looks like a much better constructed and stronger piece. It's got these fittings that look a lot nicer. The welds look a lot stronger, as you can see. These have, you know, just small welds, and these actually have some SQ welds right here. Well, let's start installing the new radiator support. Got the new radiator support installed. Still needs a little bit of uh, adjusting to do, but overall it's pretty much done. I gotta tighten down. Uh, if you're installing this, make sure you uh, thread the wires through this part first, uh, so you don't have to redo it. Also, um, I tried to lift it with the radiator already snapped in uh, to its spots, but really you don't need to do that. Um, you could actually put the screws in here and keep them loose, and then put the radiator in. That's a lot easier to do. That way you're not balancing the radiator 
and forcing it up um, as you're trying to screw everything back in. But otherwise, it's a super easy install. I know this is a really common issue with these Corvettes, people uh, hitting theirs. So if you're thinking about doing it in your driveway, go for it. It's very easy. Um, I doubt you're gonna have the same issues where you have to break your old one. But I mean, if, if it comes to that, you could always do that. Uh, it's, it's really just a really weak part of the car. I mean, it's made out of aluminum, so very easy to snap. So do be careful with it. But this is definitely a stronger product. So I do recommend this and uh, good luck. Well, the rain started coming down pretty hard, uh, but I actually got to get back to work anyway. As Rich Rebuilds always says, I got a full-time job, so I got to go do that first. Uh, but I think uh, once I'm done work, I'm going to um, repair some of this wiring right here. It looks like some of them just got torn. Um, maybe I'll go have to find a new connector for that one right there. And once that's done, um, I don't really see anything keeping us from starting to put the bumper back on. Okay, so we tightened everything down um, and I think it's time to start transferring over any, everything from this bumper to the other one, uh, so let's do that. Okay, everything is transferred over. I actually figured out I'm going to need a new fog light after all. All right, the bumper is on. As you can see, right now it's just resting on clips. It's not really adjusted. This headlight needs to be moved forward a little bit. And I'm um, really kind of unhappy with uh, the company who used tape on this bumper. Unfortunately, this tape isn't really coming off. And in one spot where I tried to peel it, this happened. Uh, and overall, the bumper is in pretty rough shape. So I have a feeling we might need to actually take it off and go get it painted, because it is really rough. But for now, it's enough to pass salvage inspection, I think. So I'm going to leave it on. Uh, so right now, I'm going to try to diagnose uh, the reason why the valves don't work on the exhaust. Um, the previous owner wired up uh, this button right here that is supposed to um, move these um, valves right here and make the exhaust loud or quiet. Uh, right now, it's just stuck in the loud position and it'd be really awesome to get that to work again. Uh, so I'm going to go open up this console and just kind of follow the wiring and see if I can see anything wrong with it. Okay, I think I finally solved the mystery. Uh, actually, there was no need of taking all of this apart now, but um, you know, I had to kind of learn how the wires work. Uh, so this is the power wire. That was, um, I think it was hooked up with the amplifier. And here's the power. So if we kind of rest this on here, uh, that gives it power. And then we come back here, click our button. Nice and quiet. Let me show you that guys from here so you can see. That's perfect. I'm so happy this feature actually works because it makes a huge difference. It sounds from like a crazy hot rod, which don't get me wrong, I love that sound, but I don't always love it when I'm just trying to drive quietly and not really in the mood for it. So I'm really glad you know, it was a really simple fix. Uh, I should have just looked back there right away considering that's where all the wires are hanging out. But um, yeah, let's put this console back together um, and we're considered this part fixed.
And that's it. The advantage of these uh, cheap GM interiors is they're very easy to pretty much take apart all the way and then put together. Um, so I guess I can't be mad about that. Uh, let's test out this exhaust again. It sounds like when it first starts that it's on open and then this closes it. So it's default position is uh, open. So uh, let's just compare. That's the stock sound we'll, with the quiet. Yeah, definitely makes a huge difference. So I was getting a little bit bored today because I'm still waiting for bar something to do on the car. And uh, this showed up in the mail. Uh, this is uh, amp. And as you saw, we have a whole bunch of wires hanging out here and the sound system doesn't work. Um, so I'm gonna try to install this right now. I'll be honest right away, I have no idea how to do this, uh, but that's the fun part. We get to try to figure it out. So let's try to figure it out and hopefully we don't blow anything up. Okay, I think I figured out what I need to do. Um, got the wiring ready. Of course, not without the help of the previous owner, Chris. So shout out to you again for that, Chris. Um, so now what's left to do is, uh, when I got the power hooked up. I got to figure out which one of these wires is which and uh, match it up here with the left, right, you know, uh, front, back, stuff like that. So I'm going to plug each one of these uh, at a time, figure out where the sound is coming from and, uh, and then screw them in. Let's go. And we have sound. Uh, this part was pretty easy. Uh, you just kind of hear where, where the sound is coming from. But I'm gonna um, pause this before music starts playing and I get demonetized. That's it for this episode, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, the car is getting really close, as you can see. The bumper is really sort of on there, but there's a lot of buttoning up to do. Uh, then we got some suspension work to do. And uh, then we're gonna start actually modding the car and hopefully we could finally register it and go for our first real test drive. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.